Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and I thought I'd spend just a few minutes showing you my top five favorite things in Illustrator CS5. So it's kind of a five and five thing going on. So I'm in Illustrator, I've only got a few minutes, so let me show you my five favorite new things. By no means is this all that's new in Illustrator, these are just my five top picks. So you notice that we have this building here and it looks like it's drawn in 3D or actually it's drawn in the new perspective drawing feature inside of Illustrator. So let's see how that works. We'll go ahead and create a new document from scratch. We'll just click OK, blank document, and now we can go ahead and pull off our new perspective drawing tools. The minute I click the perspective grid, that puts up a new grid on the page. I can go actually for the whole document. I can go ahead and pull this around, control it choose the vanishing points, di dictate exactly how I want this grid to appear. Once I get it in place, I can move it around on the page, and then I can actually start applying artwork against it using any of my drawing tools for the most part. So let's go ahead and go ahead and select our um, star tool. We'll give it a new fill color, and we'll say that the stroke itself has no stroke. All right, so now that we got that star in place, we'll just select the, pl the pane we want to be on or the plane we want to be on, and we can just go ahead and start dragging out our star. Now, we can go ahead and move that star in perspective. So it's just distorting it as if I had drawn it that way to begin with, and that's the beauty of the perspective drawing tools. Now, I know what you're saying. Can I, well, I drew it on the wrong side. Can I flip it over? And yes, you can. If you hit the keyboard shortcuts as you're moving it, you can actually move it from side to side. Now, how will this come into play when you're actually um, working with artwork in another document or that you've drawn previously? Well, if I go to my view here, I've got some windows to choose from. And we'll just go ahead and select one of these windows. We'll copy it. We'll go back to my untitled document. We'll deselect everything just so we can paste it in and see what we normally get. And we normally get something very flat. However, if I grab my perspective move tool and the minute I start interacting with this, it will now interact with it in perspective. Hold down my option or alt key and I can actually drag it out to create duplicates in perspective that gets smaller as I go down my building. And again, if I hold down or hit the number one, it will now switch it over to that panel and I can of course continue working on that side. Love the new perspective drawing features. All right, so now let's go ahead and switch back over to this document. We'll go ahead and do a view. We'll switch over to some other elements here. And probably another one of my favorite things is the new variable stroke width tool. So I have these different masks here, these different faces. But the beauty of it is these are all the same paths. These are single paths, nothing special about the paths themselves and the way they were drawn. However, what makes them different is that now when I select one with my selection tool here, I can go ahead and grab the new width tool to plot points along the path and vary the width anywhere that I want. I can hold down my option or alt key so that they're not necessarily even widths. I can go ahead and also apply these as profiles and save them and use them later. So this will just enhance the way I draw from here on out because I no longer have to think about the brush and pressure sensitivity and mastering all that, I can just simply vary the width after the fact. So love the new variable width tool and it will definitely help me in my drawing. So now we'll go ahead and switch over to this document. We'll go ahead and uh, switch to our icon view here. And in our icons, we've just got simple objects that were drawn as multiple objects and then grouped together. However, if we were using a pathfinder, we can actually make those into one. Well, luckily, my third favorite thing is that we have a brand new shape builder tool. And this tool detects all of the various pieces of this. And I can just simply drag it through those objects and it will automatically build a new shape that is one single shape now from those objects. So we'll just go ahead and do the same thing here. I can even hold down my shift key to do multiple objects that aren't touching um, all at the same uh, vector points. And we can go ahead now and combine those all into one as if I'd painstakingly, <laughs> painstakingly drew, drew them that way to begin with. All right, so let's go ahead and switch back to this document one more time. We'll go ahead and switch over to our coffee cup view. And I love this particular feature where I get the ability to choose a different drawing mode. So we've got the coffee cup here. I'm going to choose draw inside. And what that means is that now it's constraining my drawing to within inside the object. 
So if I go ahead and grab my something like my blob brush, well, of course, if I draw inside, you'll be inside. But what if I go crazy and draw outside the lines here? Well, the beauty of it is now it's constraining that drawing to just being inside the coffee cup. So it's doing all of the masking for me, everything I would need to do to keep that with inside the object or area that I draw it in. So this will help me tremendously in my artwork from here on out. All right, now to take that up a notch, let's go ahead and view one more area talking about drawing inside. We'll go to our taco, our taco truck view here. And in this case, we've got actual live text. So this text is text. We can go ahead and uh, change it to a letter D, for example. And obviously, we don't want to do that. But let's go ahead and select it now. And with that text selected, we can do the same drawing mode. We can say draw inside. So now I'll select these tacos. We'll just copy them. We'll switch back to the taco area text here. And we'll now just simply say paste. And it will automatically paste those tacos inside the words. And it's actually masking them. So now this is actually still live text. So we change that to another C. And we get the idea that that is still live text with the tacos pasted um, inside because of the draw inside feature. Last but not least, the new bristle brush painting technology. So I'll switch over to this document. And what I'm about to show you is going to look very much like painted effects inside of Photoshop. Whereas in actuality, it's all vector. So if we hit Command Y, we can see that this is all vector shapes. And now I'll go ahead and say draw inside once again. We'll grab our new, uh, or we'll grab our, our paintbrush. But in this case, we're going to create a brand new brush. This time we'll create one that's a bristle brush. So we've got our bristle brush selected. We'll go ahead and say that it's going to be a round fan that's going to be 10 millimeters in size. We'll click OK. And now with nothing selected, we'll just go ahead and switch over to our stroke. We'll go ahead and grab a, a nice uh, kind of complimentary purple to go with her dress. And now we'll grab our Wacom pen. And because we said draw inside, and now because I'm using the pen, it automatically detects the bristles that are um, imaginary in this case on my pen. But it's actually using painting technology, even though this is all vector. So I get that painted look, even though I'm not painting a single pixel in this document. I can pick different colors and get these cool effects, these cool painted strokes, these bristles, as if I had done this by hand with a, wheel, with a real wet brush. And again, at the end of the day, this is all still vector art. So that's it. Those are my top five favorite things about Illustrator CS5. More to come over the next 18 months on creativesuitepodcast.com, but I think you got just a little taste of what's new inside of Illustrator CS5. Thanks again. My name's Terry Walker.